Good morning, and welcome to the retirement ceremony in honor of Chief Warrant Officer 5, Jock L. Nixon. Our host for today's ceremony is the Honorable Christine E. Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Sergeant First Class Marcus Sorensen from the United States Army Band, Pershing's own, and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Brigadier General Jack Stummy, Army Deputy Chief of Chaplains. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming? And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Chief, we've spent time together, 82nd, first group, 18th Airborne Corps, and now here. Well done, thank you. It's an honor to be a part of your ceremony today. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty and gracious God, hallowed be your name. We gather today in celebration to honor Chief Warren Officer 5, Jock L. Nixon, for nearly four decades of faithful service to our nation. Chief Nixon has distinguished himself, Lord, since the first day of his military career, and today we thank you for the impact this leader's tenacious and steadfast spirit has made across our army. Lord God, we thank you for the support, the service, and the sacrifice of Elzora, Chief Nixon's wife, their children and family, and Lord, the joy and blessing of their 16 grandchildren. You have strengthened and sustained this family and brought them to this day of honor together. As you have now guided their ways and kept their hand of protection, your hand of protection over them these last 39 years of service, please continue to guide them in the future path filled with abundance and peace and joy and health. And now, Holy God, continue to shine your favor upon our nation upon our United States Army, and upon each of us here as we trust in you and answer our own calls to service. I pray all these things by the power of your holy and mighty name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of the Army. Good morning. It is wonderful to see you all here today to celebrate the career of Chief Jock Nixon and honor his 39 years of service in the United States Army. I know many of you traveled quite a ways to get here, and uh, I think we have even more folks watching on Zoom and other forms of social media. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I'd like to give a special welcome to the Nixon family his children, Jock, Ian, Emily, and Jonathan, his parents, Patricia, and Isaiah Sr., who are joining us virtually. I know the whole Nixon family is incredibly proud of Chief Nixon and all that he has accomplished over his many years in uniform. I don't have to tell you all, but Chief Nixon is an extraordinary man. Uh, many of you have known Chief for longer than I've uh, had the opportunity to know him. Um, but I met Chief shortly after becoming Secretary of the Army, and 
It was clear that on all matters of personnel, whether awards, orders, manning, or management, he either knew the answer or he knew who in the Army had the answer. He has an incredible network that he's able to tap into and, and find the answers to everything having to do with personnel. As I've worked with, the, uh, with Chief over the last several years, I learned that he's not only the Army's go-to for all matters HR, he's also the person that warrant officers, soldiers, NCOs, and officers alike seek out for advice, mentorship, and guidance. In this position and throughout his career, Chief Nixon has made it his duty to take care of people. He has done this selflessly. He consistently goes the extra mile above and beyond what is certainly what is required or even expected. And I've personally seen that several times as he received requests for personnel records for soldiers who had long ago passed away. He would often personally reach out and connect with different people inside of the archival or personnel systems. He would get information, compile detail records, sometimes hand-walking those records through the process, ensuring that records got to families, and in so doing, preserving that service member's legacy and honoring their service. I saw him go the extra mile in the way he took extra care handling the awarding of the Distinguished Service Cross Medal to Waverly Woodson, a black medic who saved lives on the beaches of Normandy 80 years ago. And I know from seeing the look on Waverly Woodson's widow's face when she was able to receive that award on his behalf, how much that meant to the Woodson family. He did things like this selflessly, not because there was anything in it for himself, but because it was the right thing to do. But I know you all know that already firsthand from the interactions you've had with Chief throughout his career. Chief Nixon has been serving selflessly since the day in 1986, and he told me this uh, because of our new marketing campaign. He was just finishing high school in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, he was working at an El Chico's restaurant, I think. And one morning, uh, watching cartoons on a Saturday morning, I think you told me, Chief, you were eating a bowl of cereal, the Be All You Can Be ad came on, you know, the one that said, you know, we in the Army get more done by 9 a.m. than the rest of you do for the whole day. And Chief got the idea to enlist in the Army, and the rest is history. He has been the anchor that unit leaders have trusted and relied on, whether he was at Fort Hood or Schofield Barracks, Fort Lewis or Fort Bragg, now Fort Liberty. And I can't help but note, Chief, looking at your resume, you kind of had a thing for Fort Bragg. I wore this color, you know, <laughs> just for you today. <laughs> and eventually, Chief also went to Fort Jackson and then, of course, came to us at the Pentagon. As the Chief Warrant Officer of the AG Corps, his influence has extended from unit leaders to new warrant officers and HR professionals across the entire Army. He has invested in each level of command at which he has served, and he served as the senior AG warrant at every single level of command, including today as the senior AG warrant officer in the Army. In this final role in the office of the Secretary of the Army, Chief Nixon has been able to take action on issues at the strategic enterprise level. In this final assignment, he has processed over a dozen medals of honor, medals presented by the President, names literally etched into stone monuments and inscribed in our Hall of Heroes at the Pentagon. But he wasn't just content to process those medals. He went the extra mile as he has so often in his career. Because of the efforts of Chief Nixon, he has actually decreased the time it takes to be considered for the Medal of Honor from four years and to, to six months. Why is this important? This is important because it means that recipients and family members of recipients are more likely to receive the award while they're still living. You know, many of the recipients or family members are very, very old, and sometimes that decrease in time can mean the difference between being able to receive that award personally or receiving it posthumously. And so I think that's an incredible contribution that the chief has made just recently. 
But I've also seen him go the extra mile in so many other ways during his time in the Secretary's office, from rebuilding the Army's relationship with the Divine Nine to honoring the legacy of Brigadier General Charles Young. Chief Nixon personally led the Army's efforts to ensure that Charles Young received the rank of Brigadier General, righting the injustice of being denied promotion over 100 years ago. And two years ago, because of Chief's painstakingly hard work, the Army posthumously promoted Charles Young at a ceremony at West Point. And we're joined here today We're joined here today by members of General Young's family, which I think is truly a gracious testament to the influence and impact that Chief Nixon has had, not only on our Army today, but on the legacy of our Army past and present. So Chief, on behalf of the United States Army and the many soldiers and Army civilians that you've personally helped over the years, thank you for all that you have done. Job well done. And I want to thank you, Chief, personally myself, just for a minute. Because not only have you guided me through many complex personnel matters, so many awards, so many adverse actions where careers hung in the balance, so many discussions of how the various review boards work, and believe me, there's quite a few of them. But even more than that, Chief Nixon helped me understand the Army better and helped me understand what life in the Army is like coming from his perspective as a man who has literally grown up in the Army and seen so much of what happens in the Army over many years. Your love of the Army and what it has given you and your wonderful family uh, shone through brightly in all of those conversations over the table in my office. I've truly been very fortunate to work with you, and I'm thrilled to hear that we'll be able to work together for a couple more months. And just as I've relied on Chief Nixon in many ways, he has relied on the mentorship of others to build his experience and character at every term. Army mentors like retired Sergeant Major Floyd Woods, who as a Sergeant First Class provided guidance to a young PFC Nixon, who Chief has told me was a little rough around the edges back then. Fraternity brothers like uh, retired Major Ahmad Andrews, and warrant officers like Chief Dixon Carter, another unforgettable chief in our Army family, all of whom you're going to hear from in a few minutes. All three of you and many other individuals and communities here in this room and watching virtually had a hand in making the chief who he is today. You're a large part of what has made him successful for nearly four decades in the Army. But most of all, the chief's success is driven by his family. His wife, Elzora, sons and children, Jock, Ian, Emily, and Jonathan. Thank you, all of you, for all of the support you've given your husband and your dad over these many years. Because as you all know, <laughs> Army life can be challenging sometimes, even though it's rewarding. The moving, the deployments, the late nights spent away from home all require a lot of sacrifice from family members. It can be difficult to raise a family when you're so dedicated to the Army, but uh, Jock and Elzora have successfully raised four wonderful children and have a whole lot of grandchildren and one more on the way, <laughs> which is wonderful news. The love and support that you all have given the Chief over the years has just made a tremendous difference and you all have all helped make the Army better. Chief, as you finish here and are promoted to Chief Warrant Officer 5 retired and take on your primary duty assignment of grandpa, you have left us tremendously large shoes to fill, but I know that you've trained and mentored the AG Corps very, very well. <laughs> as you head into retirement, I also know you won't stop serving those around you and serving as a mentor. As you hang up your uniform, I look forward to hearing about the people and communities you've inspired, all while enjoying a good cigar and a glass of bourbon. <laughs> Maybe even two, because I think you've earned it. <laughs> Your selfless service has inspired so many around you. Thank you for always going the extra mile and for all that you've done for the Army and the country. So, Chief, I know that you have processed hundreds of thousands of personnel actions over the 39 years, but now it's time to process the most important ones 
your retirement orders. Please come and join me on stage. Would Chief Nixon and Ms. Mrs. Nixon please join Secretary Wormuth in front of the flags. Please remain seated during the publishing of the orders and presentations. Attention to orders. The Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Chief Warrant Officer 5, Jock L. Nixon, for exemptionally meritorious service to the government in duties of great responsibility over a 39-year career, culminating as the Assistant Executive Officer to the Secretary of the Army. Throughout his distinguished career, Chief Nixon, as a role model, a mentor, and a devoted adjutant general technician, his leadership, example, and technical expertise have left an indelible mark on the Army. He leaves behind a legacy rich with numerous significant contributions to both the Army and the nation. Chief Warrant Officer 5, Nixon's selfless service and steadfast commitment to soldiers, civilians, and their families embody the highest ideals of military service and bring great honor to himself, the office of the Secretary of the Army, and the United States Army. Signed, Christine E. Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. A certificate from the Commander-in-Chief is being presented to Chief Warrant Officer 5, Jock L. Nixon. The certificate reads, I extend to you my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embodied the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, Commander-in-Chief. A certificate of retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America is now <laughs> is now being presented to Chief Warrant Officer 5 Nixon. The certificate reads, this is to certify that Chief Warrant Officer 5, Jock L. Nixon, having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Army. Signed, Randy A. George, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff of the Army. As a symbol of his faithful service to our nation, Chief Nixon is being presented with the flag of the United States, which was flown over the Pentagon on October 29th, 2024. Secretary Warmoth is now presenting Chief Nixon with framed flags that represent the offices of both the Secretary and the under Undersecretary of the Army.
Attention to orders. The Meritorious Public Service Medal is awarded to Elzora E. Nixon for exceptionally meritorious volunteer service to various Army organizations. Mrs. Nixon was an inspiring, compassionate, and tireless volunteer whose exceptional efforts improved the morale, esprit de corps, and well-being of every organization, unit, and community she served. Her selfless contributions of time, talent, and energy positively enhanced a myriad of key programs and initiatives. Mrs. Nixon's distinctive accomplishments across 39 years of meritorious volunteer service are a great credit to her, the Office of the Secretary of the Army, and the United States Army. Signed, Mark F. Averill, Administrative Assistant to the Secretary of the Army. A certificate of appreciation is now being presented to Mrs. Elzora Nixon. The certificate reads, this is to certify that Elzora Nixon, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding help to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Randy A. George, General, United States Army Chief of Staff. Thank you, Secretary Wormuth, Chief Nixon, and Mrs. Nixon. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Major Floyd Woods, United States Army, retired. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Madam Secretary, General Officers, Sergeants Majors, Senior NCOs, Soldiers, Families and Friends of Chief CW5 Jock L. Nixon, my wife and I are very honored to be here today. and. Uh, to recognize the accomplishments of this great soldier and this great American. <clears throat> I bought my glasses just in case I need them, but I think I might make it through without them. Um, Chief and I go back a long ways, more than 30 years, when he was that young PFC and that young specialist in the 25th Infantry Division, Tropic Lightning, Hua, right? Um, it's amazing because uh, before I get into this, I'm going I'm to talk about the it factor because you're going to hear me talk about that, say that a couple times during this ceremony. The it factor is somebody that has something special inside of them, a can-do attitude, a positive attitude, a person who loves a challenge and is willing to accept responsibility. He or she is a problem solver, not a problem. That's what PSC Specialist Nixon was when I knew him and still is. I recall the first time I, I seen him in the 3rd Brigade Broncos. We both were in the Broncos. I was at the battalion level. He was at the Brigade S4 as an admin specialist. I was in the battalion as an S4 in so I see. Needless to say, the battalion always comes up to the, the brigade. So I remember going around the corner in, to the S4. There was this young PFC sitting at a desk. He seen me, he got up immediately, standing at attention, and he said, Welcome, Sergeant, to the, the brigade S4. What can I do for you? I just kind of like looked at him and said, Wow. I said, Okay. I like this guy. <laughs> I like this guy. So we talked a lot. Whenever I went to brigade or he came down to the battalion, we talked. I asked him about his family, his goals, what he thought about the military. 
and where he wanted to go. He told me about his beautiful wife, Elzora, and his young son, Jock Jr., and his eyes just lit up when he talked about them. So the pride was there. He asked me about my son, and to this day he calls him by name, Cameron. And he told me all he wanted really was a better life for his wife, the best life he could give them in his son, in his in large family now. But uh, I said, okay. But he said he wasn't sure that the Army was, was the, the way to do it. And I said, well, why do you think that? He, he told me he felt he was underutilized. And uh, I could see he had talent. He had, all he needed was a little push, like Madam Secretary said, a little bit raw. But he was going to be well done before he left, left Hawaii. <laughs> so I told him, uh, Special Nixon, I always knew him as Special. PFC was like, I can't, can't relate that far back, but that's okay. I said, the Army is what you make out of it. You can sit back on this tour that you have in the 25th and just slide through. Or you can be proactive. He like looked at me, kind of looked a little look and said, proactive? I said, yeah. You need to make yourself marketable. You need to make yourself visible. I told him you need to uh, enroll in correspondence courses. Think about promotion, you know. Up that PT score, that's that weapons qualification card, you know. Think about college. Go to see a, uh, a counselor and enroll in some courses. But I told him one of the most important things is remember you have a family. Take the time and make the time for your wife and your son because they're going to be there for you. They're going to be there for you. So what, did, what, what happened? I was visiting a brigade one day, and there's Special Nixon. He, you know, he got up and greeted me. He had Army correspondence courses on his desk doing it. He had a promotion packet. Brigade most back. I'm looking at these correspondence courses, and of course there's admin, but there's logistics books. I already knew the answer, but I asked him, well, why are you taking logistics? And this is the kind of person he is. He said, I'm in the Brigade S4. I want to understand logistics. Okay? I said, okay, cool, cool. But later on, the Brigade S4 and so I see retired, and I was moved up to, to the brigade level, and I was very excited because we had a great officer, a major that cared about the mission and cared about his people. And I was excited to work with that team and be working directly with, I'll say, PFC Nixon. Okay? And I told him, you ain't, you will forget about that uh, underutilized, that's not going to happen. I pile stuff on him. I pile, it's like a, a second lieutenant coming in an infantry, infantry company. You know, you just, whew, whew, whew. and I've seen that, believe me. They're going to make mistakes, but they're going to learn. At first, he was overwhelmed, but I was there to help him. And he made it through it. Amazing. He asked for more as time passes. And we talked about his schools. I said, what about aerosol? He like looked at me. Don't they jump out of stuff? <laughs> I said, yep. I said, it's one of the hardest, most demanding courses I ever went to. But when they pin them wings on you, you're proud. It was all worth it. I told him about zero day. And if anybody knows about zero day, you live in the sand pit. <laughs> you know, you just think, don't think that it's ever going to end. Roll right, roll left, bouncing ball, push-ups, sit-ups. Finally, they move you to the uh, double time, you do the obstacles, you yell an aerosol all the way. He did it. No problem. Later in the day, I went to see him. He had sweat all over him, sand all over his BDUs, but he had a smile. And I told him, yes, the it factor, the it factor. So I told him, Monday, you're going to start school. You're going to learn how to repel. You're going to learn about sling loading, rigging, how to call a, a bird in. And it's amazing. I told him on the last day, 
you're going to do a 12-mile foot march, time foot march. So they kind of like looked at me, okay. And I said, don't worry, because I'm going to be there with you. We're going to do it together. That day did come. I met him out there at the aerosol course in the East Range. Of course, it was sunny. If anybody's been to East Range, it's not sunny. It's raining like always raining. But he was putting his pack back together at being up from the layout, had us all his battle rattle on, weapon, cavalier, backpack, his canteens full of water. And we took off. You can't walk 12 miles in three hours. If you can, you're maybe this gentleman here with long legs can and scorpio, but but I couldn't. So you had to run, jog, trot, range walk. At the six mile mark, we're turning around and look at I look at Special Nixon, and he's still going strong. He's sweating, which is good. When you don't sweat, then you gotta worry. But uh, <laughs> coming back, we're going to the last hill, we come up the rise. And he's, he's still doing good. He's still going to tell me, hey, you need water? I got water. He, and I looked over at him and said, Special Nixon, let's finish strong. He didn't say nothing. He just took off. <laughs> took off. I caught him at the finish line. And he went to one knee, bowed his head a little bit, said a prayer, looked up at me and said, we made it. I said, no, you made it. Later in the day, at his award ceremony, when they blood pinned his wings on, I don't know if they do that anymore, <laughs> but they pinned an eye, I walked up to him, no? Okay, that's not, I guess, I guess, I, I guess we can't do that anymore. Old soldier, old soldier. But anyhow, I walked up to him, and I congratulated him, and I didn't have to say when I said, are you ready? I didn't have to tell him what he was ready for. He knew I was talking about the promotion board. His answer was, hoo So we got him ready for the promotion board. He already had a, a packet, a study guide. All he needed to do was fresh up on his current events, chain of command, and stuff like that. So the day of the board, he actually had a 670-1, AR-670-1. So we got his uniform ready. The uniform looks really good, Chief. Really good. <clears throat> the day of the board, the president of the board was the brigade sergeant major. And the board members were made up of the brigade uh, NCICs. So when it was uh, Special Nixon's turn, I heard this loud, confident knock on the door. Sergeant major told him, report, come in. Special Nixon opened the door, did a quick Look, he seen where the SAR major was, where he had to report, smartly reported to him. Did the facing movements, reported proudly, said, Special Nixon's reports to the president of the board as directed. He held that salute. SAR major had him do a few facing movements so everybody could see his uniform, his awards, made sure to match the 2-alpha 2-1. Two Is that right? Okay. It's been a while. <laughs> and he sat down. He answered them questions with confidence. He didn't know all the answers. Nobody does. But he told that, looked that person, and asked, asked that question. He didn't know it. said, I don't know that, Sergeant, but I'm going to find out, and I'll let you know. He was dismissed from the board. Sergeant Major told him, go outside, wait. All the score sheets were handed in. I looked at Sergeant Major, and he looked at me and says, wow, he was ready. I said, I said to myself, it factor. And I told that Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major, I have one thing to say. We need to get this young soldier to the next PLDC, PLDC class, Primary Leadership Development course. I think now it's basic leadership course. I'm not sure. And the Sergeant Major agreed. He called him back in, congratulated him, recommended for promotion, told him, you need to get ready for PLDC. You're going. Because Nixon is not... not his face didn't change. I don't know how he didn't smile or whatever. His face didn't change. Saluted, exited the door. He already had the PLDC packet. You know? That's, as, as the secretary said, he's, he's proactive. He knows what's going on. 
see, got all those uniforms ready. We worked together. I was a sponsor. Took him out the first day of PLDC to report. And, of course, they did their layout, PT tests, weigh in. At that time, Chief must have weighed maybe 150 pounds. So I was a little worried about the weight, the weight thing, you know. <laughs> a little worried about it, but not much. He aced that stuff. 30 days later, when we all went to his, his graduation, he was telling me throughout the, the process of what, uh, what he had learned when they pinned the, the E7 on him. He was a platoon sergeant for a couple days. What it meant to be a leader and worry about people and soldiers. You know? He was no longer a specialist, one of the guys. He was now a leader, a mentor. He had to learn the NCO creed out there, and they recited it. So he understood what an NCO was all about. And we went out there. The whole section went out there, and his wife and son were there. Watched him in, in the ceremony. He, that's probably the only time he was loud in his life. But I could hear him because I was listening for him as he recited the NCO creed. Even after he completed that, he wasn't, he wasn't satisfied. He got promoted. He even got, before he left Hawaii, he was E5P, promotable. But he kept striving, completed his associate's degree, kept doing the correspondence courses, learned as much as he could. He tried, to, tried and was a valuable member of the 3rd Brigade Bronco S4, earned the trust of the, the major he already had my trust, but the trust of the fellow people within the brigade, especially the command sergeant major. Now, at the time, Sergeant Nixon, like I said, he wasn't satisfied. He said, I want to go to airborne school. I kind of like scratched my head a little bit. I listened to him this for about maybe a few days. I knew it was going to be a hard sell because 25th is an airborne. <laughs> They're air assault. Air assault. But I went to the sergeant major who had just complete respect for that young sergeant. And he went to bat for us. We got him a slot. So off he went to Fort Benning. I'm not sure what the name of Fort Benning is now. Probably Charlie's changed. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> he came back with them air, airborne wings. Proud. And he asked me, what do you think is more important, air assault or airborne? <laughs> and I just kind of like, okay, uh, they're both pretty prestigious. You got to be uh, proud of them both. Then I looked at him and said, air assault. <laughs> so anyhow, chief, as the secretary said, you can look back at these 39 years and know the profound effect you had on a lot of things. You served our country with honor and distinction, respect and selfless service. You took care of soldiers and their families. Just amazing. If you were still in Hawaii, I would say mahalo, which is thank you. But since you're not in Hawaii anymore, I only have three, three simple strong words that describe the man and soldier that's sitting over there today. Duty. Honor, country. Thank you, Special Nixon. Thank you, Sergeant Major Woods. Ladies and gentlemen, Major Ahmad Andrews, United States Army, retired. Chief, I checked my phone, your check cleared, so I'll keep all those secrets to myself this time. <laughs> In the Bible, Psalms 133 begins, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. What an occasion for us to gather to celebrate the career accomplishments of a man who entered the Army in 1986. Whew. As an E1, and successfully rose through the ranks to CW5 now retiring after 39 years of federal service. Better yet, what a guy. 
for us to gather for. An Army human resources professional that spent over 14,000 days taking care of soldiers, their careers, and better yet, their families. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, good morning. My name is Ahmad Andrews. I have the unique honor and privilege to introduce to some and remind others of the CW5, who is the ultimate professional, passionate community servant, tenacious Omega man my brother, and most importantly, my friend. So as, as I speak to the honoree today, most of you guys refer to as chief, I'll simply refer to as brother. Brother Nixon was initiated into the Omega Psi Phi fraternity incorporated through the Beta Chi chapter in Fayetteville, North Carolina on December 7th, 2013, and began, com began serving communities with the same selfless passion and energy he's done with the Army so many years before. In Omega, we have 12 mandated programs. One particularly, the Social Action Program, attracted the attention, time, and talents of Brother Nixon. The mission statement is simple. Execute projects and events that will uplift the community. So when you see Omegas putting on programs such as Assault on Illiteracy, Habitat for Humanity, Young Father Mentoring, St. Jude Fundraising, Walks for Diabetes, Youth Summits, or job fairs that focus on the Army as a career. Look for Brother Nixon. He's sure to be somewhere in the vicinity. See, the same energy that Chief Nixon brought to the soldiers and their families, Brother Nixon brought to the communities, his chapters, and our frat brothers were servers. In just 11 years, Brother Nixon has been serving the communities in the, in the ranks of Omega and has served in the following positions and earned the following accolades. As a social action deputy and committee chairman, the chapter received the third district social action large chapter of the year, the third district St. Jude top fundraising chapter, Prince William County Human Rights Community Organization of the Year Award, the Omega Psi Phi International Social Action Chapter of the Year, the Omega Psi Phi top fundraising chapter of the year, and his individual awards include He's a three-time recipient of the Colonel Charles Young Leadership Award, two-time recipient of the Omega Man of the Year Award, and as mentioned before, Brother Nixon even helped rewrite history as he won, as he was the primary action officer for the honorary posthumous promotion of Colonel Charles Young to now Brigadier General Young, which Madam Secretary approved. What, an, what a resume for such a short period of time. To my friend, Brother Nixon, in both the Army and Omega, we all know you as a hard worker, a problem solver, and a dedicated professional. But beyond that, you've always been a good, good friend. Someone who brings warmth, wisdom, and a sense of humor to everything you do. Your kindness, your ability to listen, and your willingness to help others have made such a difference to all of us who've had the privilege to work alongside of you. I've been fortunate enough to call you a very good friend for the last nine years. And I can say without a doubt that your passion and love for life are contagious. Whether it's the stories that we've shared, <laughs> the laughter we've had, or the times that you've been there for me through thick and thin, you've shown me what true friendship and self-sacrifice really mean. As you move into this new chapter of life, I have no doubt that your retirement will be just another adventure. One that you'll take on with the same energy and enthusiasm and joy that you brought to everything else. I can already see it now. Early morning, on the porch of your retirement home, sipping on a hot cup of coffee, <laughs> critiquing the Carson guards for not using proper hand and arm signals to get the kids safe to school. <laughs> the legacy you leave behind in the United States Army and continue to build in Omega is one of excellent kindness and selfless service. And though your absence will surely be felt by your battle buddy and servicing soldiers, I'm sure I speak for all, saying that we're excited to see you embark on this well-deserved next chapter. May this new journey be filled with everything you love, more time with family and friends, new experiences, lots of relaxation, and, and of course, more work for the cues. So here's to you, my friend, my brother. I salute you. May your retirement be long, peaceful, full of bourbon and cigars, and more cigars and bourbon. <laughs> and may it bring you all the joy you can. 
Congratulations, my brother and friend. Thank you, Major Andrews. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Yolandria Dixon Carter, former Chief Warrant Officer of the Army. Good morning, good morning, Madam Secretary. Thank you so much for being here and for taking time out to honor and celebrate our beloved friend, mentor, and family member, as well as an Omega man. And to you, to the under, thank you so much, sir, for being here today. And to Chief Warrant Officer of the Army, uh, Aaron Anderson, thank you for being here as well. And to all of our general officers, to all of our senior enlisted, to all of our distinguished guests, family members, especially to the Nixon family, thank you for being here. And I gotta do something. I gotta break protocol for about 21 seconds minus 20 seconds. Big shout out to the one officers. And so I stand here today as representation for what you just heard, the one officer cohort, and not just for the AG cohort, but for the lives that Chief One Officer 5, Jock Nixon, has touched across our entire cohort, all 17 branches. And so today we gather here to celebrate and to honor an incredible journey of a man who has dedicated his entire adult life to the Army and this nation. I know that you're probably right now going through a roller coaster of emotions because you probably have the testimony of, they said you wouldn't make it. They said you wouldn't be here today. They said you never amount to anything, but look at you today. You're here and you're standing. And we celebrate you. We celebrate a man who is not just a soldier, but he's a mentor, he's a leader, he's a husband, a father, a friend, and an Omega man. He is a man who has shaped the lives of countless soldiers, civilians, and their families. He is a man that has ensured under his leadership that everyone, to include little old me, DC, that we were equipped, we were empowered, and we were encouraged, whether we were deployed, whether we were in garrison, or whether we were in the communities in which we called home. This man that I speak of is a constant presence and reminder in the lives of others, not just in moments of victory, but also in times of challenges. This man, through his guidance, soldiers have become stronger and families have felt more secure and civilians have been uplifted by his unwavering sense of duty and dedication and compassion. But his impact goes beyond the Army. This man has also been a pillar in his community, contributing in ways that extend far beyond the military, as you have heard here on today. In every role he has held, whether in his family, as a soldier, or a friend, he has lived up to the values of integrity, respect, and selfless service. He has lived up to the values of physical fitness. Now, Sergeant Major Woods, I will tell you this. He started out, right, as, you know, sweating and still being able to go. But I remember a time doing familiarization of the Army combat physical test and training. <laughs> He, he fell on his knees to pray, Lord, get me through this day. <laughs> and then there was another time when the both of us were out there again, and we both looked at each other. And I don't use colorful language, but if I would, I would say that we looked at each other and we both said, we're getting too old for this sugar honey iced tea. <laughs> but this man, his accomplishments and his achievements are a reminder that true service does not end with the clock. It is a mission that transcends time. It is fueled by a heart and fierce determination to honor those who serve. This man, he is a man of justice, unwavering in what is right. He is a man of accountability, holding himself and others to the highest standard. He is a man of commitment, 39 years and 14 days, say less. He is a man of quality and in everything that he does. His attention to detail and dedication, as you have heard, was beyond reproach and oftentimes got on my nerves. 
but it also pushed me to be better, ensuring that every task was completed with the utmost care and precision. He is a man of unity. If you look at this room, around this room today, he brought us all together. He is a man committed to excellence. He exemplified the very best in all of us. And so by now, the man that I speak of and the first letter of each word, justice, accountability, commitment, quality, unity, and excellence, it represents none other than our beloved mentor, leader, friend, husband, family man, Omega man, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Jock Nixon. You've been more than just a mentor to me. You've been a friend, you've been a brother from another mother. You've been a brother to my husband, you've been a friend to my family, and we truly appreciate you and all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that we know you will continue to do. So my brother, my friend, my mentor, my AG, my whatever you wanna say, right? <laughs> Congratulations on your retirement. I admire and respect all that you've done and how hard you've worked to get to where you are today. You've done that for almost close to four, four decades, and we salute you. We give you your flowers today while you are yet alive. You can smell them, you can see them, and you can enjoy them. You have made a difference in the lives of so many people, to include myself. And so today, my friend, I wish you nothing short of excellence. I wish that your future be filled with all of the things that you appreciate and less about what you tolerate. So again, congratulations to you. I salute you again. Enjoy your next. Thank you, Chief Dixon Carter. Ladies and gentlemen, Flowers are now being presented to Chief Warrant Officer 5, Jock Nixon's wife, his daughter, and his two daughters-in-law. Chief Nixon's sons and grandchildren are receiving a gift found under their seats. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Jock L. Nixon, United States Army, retired. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to try to read this. Yeah. All right. Thank you to all the distinguished guests for attending, everyone that's on live stream. Thank you to the Army protocol team and specifically Ms. Simpson. I met with her a few months ago to talk about my ceremony and she sat there and listened to me very, very intently. And I told her my vision of everything I wanted to, to see happen. And she told me we're not doing none of that. <laughs> Uh, so, ma'am, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I would also like to thank General Stummy. Um, we met 
at first Special Forces Group, and then we served together in the 82nd, uh, and then obviously here. And so, um, so sir, it goes without saying that you being linked to me has uh, made you a general officer. <laughs> I would also, I would also like to thank. <laughs> I would also like to thank the old guard. Uh, everything that you do in this, in this ceremony adds the prominence and gives it that special attention. So thank you for what you guys do. I appreciate it. Um, although it is not true, some people might say that I have a control problem. It is sometimes hard for me to give up that control, and so I have battled with C-35 Dixon Carter and C-34 Burton the past two or three or four weeks. Um, we have battled back and forth about this ceremony and what I wanted, and they too again said, we're not doing none of that. <laughs> so I would publicly like to thank the, both of you for what you've done, your effort, your energy, li listen, listen to me, making sure that my family was, 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 was here on time and everything. And um, this event would not have been as it is without you, you ladies doing all those extra things. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, so today my message is simple, thank you. There are so many of you over so many years that have enabled me to stand before you having served our nation for 30. <sighs> 39 plus years. I will not be able to call out each of your name, but if you're under the sound of my voice on the, on, on the count of two, I would like for you to say your name, please. <laughs> One, two. So I would like for you to know that it means so much that each of you are here honoring myself and my family. You could have chosen to be anywhere, but you're here. You notice it's purple as well, right? Um, So, although I can't thank each of you personally, there are a few individuals in which I have to say thank you to personally. First, Madam Secretary, I would like to say to you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. First, for taking time out of your schedule. We all know how valuable and busy you are. And uh, again, when I asked you to, to do this, you instantly said yes, so I appreciate so much you taking the time to um, do this ceremony for me. Um, I sat there listening to you, trying to figure out if you were really talking about me. Because <laughs> the stories that you were saying, in fact, all of you, I was like, that's not the story that I remember. <laughs> um, I would also like to thank you, ma'am, for truly caring about our Army and its people. I've, I've had the opportunity to sit across you and brief you various types of actions, as you, as you mentioned. If people only knew the time that you took, the questions that you asked, the deep questions that you asked us to go back and find out to bring back to you before you made a decision on individuals' lives and our army, I think they would truly be shocked. You really care about this institution in which I spent all my life in. Thank you, ma'am. The undersecretary. People think he's quiet, but man, <laughs> man. So you really have to see him in action. He 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 is the traffic cop, I would say. Uh, things 
when he starts talking, things move. Things move. So, sir, I really appreciate, I really appreciate just having the opportunity to watch you and just see truly how you inspire us to move faster than what we thought we could. <laughs> um, also, I would, I would like to thank the other senior leaders here. Thank you for coming, specifically Major General Price, General Evans, um, who's, who's here. Your impact on me has been monumental, monumental. Uh, I was going to retire twice under each of them. And um, I sat, I told them that this, this was my intent. And uh, probably, probably about three to four weeks later, I received PCS orders. <laughs> so, so, sir, sir, thank you so much. Um, I would like to thank and honor my family for being here. Zora, Zora. We met in high school when uh, she, was, she was in class and I was skipping class. <laughs> and uh, I was walking down the hallway and I saw, I saw her. I had not seen her before and I saw her. And I saw her. <laughs> and uh, so we've been on this journey together for 38 years. Uh, you've raised our four grown kids our 13 grandkids. You took care of our home. Thank you. Thank you. And probably most important, our four kids are not in my pocket. Um, so to our kids, Terrence, Jock, Ian, Emily, Jonathan, and their spouses, Tiffany, Malika, uh, T, and Terry. Uh, so you've given us 13 grandchildren, wonderful grandchildren. And, uh, a few of them are here today, so they call me Papa. And uh, I'm the fun one. So if you want ice cream and pizza and cake, that's me. Um, so I would like to state for the record that when I've called one of you, I'm not going to say which, uh, I can hear in the background that uh, it's him again. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name me, name you. But the but the next time that you ask me for money, I will remember this. Hey, hey. <laughs> Josiah. <laughs> Call me. Josiah. <laughs> quick, quick story. So my, my son's wife was pregnant with him. He was due July 7th or 8th. My birthday is the 13th. I asked her to hold on and <laughs> no, I, true. I asked her, I asked her to hold on and have him on my birthday. She gave birth to him at 2 o'clock and 2, 2 30 in the morning on the 13th of July. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you'll see to the left side, there's some individuals in blue, navy blue, in fact. That is my family uh, from, uh, from South Memphis. Now, what you heard was South Memphis, S-O-U-T-H. <laughs> but what I said was S-O-U-F, South Memphis. <laughs> and there is a difference in between South and South. And if you met my family members, you, you, 
You understand? <laughs> you understand? Thank you guys for attending. I love you. Um, special shout out to my brothers, Terry, Isaiah, Kwan, who's on live stream. Thank you for attending, Take it, taking, taking the time to come here and celebrate this day with me. Um, I also have some close friends that are here that are in fact just as much my family, just as much my family as, as, as my families are the Baileys, the Simpsons, the Tarts, the Williams, the Grinners. Uh, thank you for your years of friendship and for always being there during some very difficult times. I would be remiss if I did not give a shout out to Ms. Miriam Gard, I'm not sure if she's here, but uh, thank you for supporting me in all the social action endeavors that myself and my chapter chapter uh, uh, were involved in. I would also like to thank Ms. Ms. Young and her daughter, Ms. Kelly, and her brother Lawrence for attending this event. They are the direct descendants of now General Charles Young and uh, that the secretary uh, approved back in 2000. 21. So she says that it was me who did it, but, but obviously I have no authority. She's the one who did it. So ma'am, thank, thank you. Thank you. And to the Young family, again, thank you for allow, allowing me to be a part of your, I mean, be, be a part of your labor of love. Like so many of you people, people know your different personas and, and may know you by many different names. Most people know me as Chief Nixon, a few know me as Jock, even less know me as Custo, and obviously only a, only a select few know me as Dad or Papa. If you would like, to, if, if, if you would have does me, I would like to, to tell you a story, a, sto a story of who I am, and I'll be quick. As I mentioned, I grew up in South Memphis, and growing up there, I had Memphis tendencies, which, <laughs> which I will keep to myself so I can keep my clearance. <laughs> Growing up in Memphis, I played sports and, and I even held a job at El Chico's, which I was fired to <laughs> due to my Memphis tendencies. <laughs> so after being fired, I was sit sitting in the house on a Saturday morning watching cartoons and having my favorite cereal, Captain Crunch. This commercial comes on and it was the 1981 army slogan of be all you can be. And I said to myself, that's what I want to do. So came in the Army in 1986, September 7th. Most of you wasn't even born then. And um, was shipped off to Fort Hood for a quick minute and then to Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, where I met this young man at the time, Sergeant First Class Woods. And um, Sergeant Woods, I never met an NCO like him before. Uh, I mean, he was always, and I absolutely mean always on me about something. <laughs> about something. He was always on me about something. But under his leadership, I learned about being responsible, having, having a work ethic, as well as the Army values. Uh, as he mentioned, I completed airsoft school twice. <laughs> Once you leave, you're, you're, you're like, okay, I got it. Um, I completed Airborne School, P PLDC, and then the story he told about me going to the Ed Center, you know, it's partially true. What really happened was he had told me several times to go take classes, to go sign up for classes. And you know, I'm like, Assad, okay, all right, I will. I, but I never did. He marched me down to the Ed Center himself. <laughs> and, uh, you may, not, you may not remember, but he paid for the first card of the class out of his pocket. Yep. And uh, told me that uh, each term that I would take a class, and I didn't want to, but I, I, didn't, I, I really didn't have a choice. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I soon saw two, three years later that I had a bachelor's and really wasn't even trying. But it was, it was really because he, he made me go. Um, he would also come into our home, if you, if you remember. He would look in cabinets, look in the bathroom, just, oh, I'm like, what is this dude doing? 
but but he was he was looking to see how a soldier lived. Um, I did I didn't know that at the time, but he he could see when I would come in the morning if I had a difficult evening, <laughs> and uh, and so but he knew me in such a way that he was able to guide me in whatever way that I needed. So so I was. Thank you. <laughs> Soon after that, uh, I'll fast forward. I was a staff sergeant in Shape, Belgium, and uh, I wanted to become a warrant officer. And uh, there was three or four warrants that was assigned there, and I went to two of them, interviewed, and uh, they told me that I was not ready. And so uh, they gave me some things to do. I did those things and I went to a third individual, interviewed with him, and guess what he told me? That I wasn't ready. <laughs> but he called me back the uh, next day and he said, Sergeant Nixon, Staff Sergeant Nixon, I still don't think that you're ready, but it's something about you. He told me that if, that he would sign my letter if I went to Fort Bragg. And so, of course, whatever he said, I would do. So I did. Showed up at Fort Bragg, went, went, went to school. Six, eight months later, showed up at Bragg, or Liberty, excuse me, and um, walk into the office, and guess who I see? CW5, Tommy Daughtry, Tommy Gunn Daughtry. And uh, for the next 15 years, for the next 15 years, I'm sorry. Oh. So for the next 15 years, I worked for him. And he taught me everything I know about being warned, about character. So uh, even to his even to his last months in the army, he did he, he actually did forty years. But even to his last months in the army, where we uh, uh, a few months prior to him retiring, we jumped together. His last jump in the army, he was in front of me. I think he was jumper six or seven. I was seven or eight or whatever. And um, we had a new Air Force pilot, and they put us out early. So anyone who 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 has jumped out of the airplane, you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> we landed in the trees. <laughs> he landed about 40 feet up. I landed about 35 feet. He looked down, he looked down at me and screamed. He said, I'm still better than you. <laughs> so, Tommy, um, I know that, so he called me two days ago. He was coming and he had, he, he had some, um, health issues and so he could not make it. But again, I would be remiss if I did not say thank you for what you've done. Um, truly, I, I'm the warrant that I am today because of how you took care of me and cared for me. So thank you, Tommy. Um, so from, the, from him being my mentor, um, I would like to say thank you to some of my mentees. Everything that, everything that Tommy taught me is what I taught you, uh, or showed you at least. Um, CW5 Cavalieri, CW5 Tyus, CW4 Burden, W4 Pigney, Blyfield, uh, Brister, and uh, there's, there's, I think, a few, a few others. Uh, Rob Store, Rob Savage. Um, I really, really would just like to tell you thank you for allowing me to uh, watch over you, serve you, and uh, be be your mentor. Uh, a lot of you sometimes were challenging, um, <laughs> very, very difficult. But thank you. Um, you are the people technical expert, you query data, conduct research, and change that data, data into meaningful information, and more, and more importantly, you give your bosses options based on your facts, which are laws, 
st statutory guidelines, regulations, and not your opinion. Not your opinion. Not your opinion. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you have allowed me to be a bridge builder for you. I would like to tell the men of Omega South Five Returning Incorporated. Thank you. Thank you for your comradeship. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your time. And thank you for your life lessons, one of which is to always keep a younger bro around. <laughs> I, lear I learned that lesson the hard way. Uh, I would also like to thank some of my former NC N NCOICs. Before I say this, Art Nelson, please stand up, sir. Art Nelson, stand up. Yes, sir, Art Nelson. So, I would like for everyone to see him, or sorry. This young man does not get the flowers that he really deserves. So he, he worked at Fort Bragg in the MPD section, and every warrant, every single warrant that has came to now Fort Liberty would have to go see this young man, and he would teach all, all of us all these warrants, he would teach all of us about pass, about queries, about data, how, how to change data into information. And I will tell you, Art. Man, thank you, man. Thank you. All right. I'm almost done, I'm sorry. To my former NCOs, some, some of them are here. Um, the Bradfords, Catinos, the Taylors, Cannons, and of course, Matt Sergeant Sablon, who's probably working somewhere. Thank you for always having my back. Um, to all of the past and current um, NCOs in the front office, you are phenomenal. You're the first individuals there in the office in the morning and you're the last to turn off the lights and everything in everything in between uh, when the printer goes down when there's paper your job is not sexy at all it's not sexy but it's vital it's crucial crucial so when the leaders have to make a decision all those things are done and all all they really need to do is push a button so thank you so much for everything that you've done People don't necessarily notice, but I will tell you, I notice you. Uh, so in conclusion, for the last 39 years and 14 days, I've given my life to this. And I've had some great memories, been some great people, some great friends, and now that day is finally here. Um, I have no idea what it is I'm going to do other than these four things and then smoke a lot of cigars <laughs> and drink a lot of bourbon and drink a lot of bourbon and smoke a lot of cigars. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 5 Nixon, Jacques Nixon, Chief, Chief Warrant Officer of the Branch, Defend and Serve, Be All You Can Be, sign it off. Thank you, Chief Nixon. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Army Song by Sergeant First Class Sorensen. The words to the Army Song are in your program.
March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For where'er we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We invite guests to congratulate Chief Nixon and family in front of the flags following the family photo.